If I were writing down um, ten thousand questions that you were gonna ask me before this, yeah. which I, you know, I didn't, but uh, that would not even make a list of ten thousand. That is hilarious. something I thought about. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the People Person Podcast, presented by Good Time Media. I'm your host Wyatt, as always, and today I'm joined in studio, first time in studio guest in a long time, with founder and CEO of Cracked Rackets, Dalton Thieneman. Dalton, how you doing? Fantastic, man. I know uh, you threw out initially, uh, let's do it. We can do it via Zoom. That'll be a little more convenient, but I think it's a great day to have a day. So I'm excited. Always to be is. In the studio, oh, what's yeah. your thought on the studio? Not a lot of people have been in here. Yeah, man. I will, first and foremost, <laughs> we'll get to it in a second, but um, I found a Cracked Rackets when I was 26. So it was August of 2017. Mm-hmm. Um, you're 24? 23. 23 so you you know already and you started good time uh 2020 so i was probably 20, i was 21 yeah so fuck yeah dude oh, yeah. Um, i don't know if we can cuss but you can say whatever the fuck you want man yeah so unbelievable man uh so yeah that's first and foremost but second off i'm i'm uh, absolutely uh speechless uh i love the old school you know, LeBron poster, you got the Reggie. I'm pissed that I didn't wear my Reggie jersey to shout out Indy, but we are in Indianapolis, obviously. Yeah, we had to fill some space. So I'm not a biggest LeBron guy, but it's kind of a hard, it's kind of a tough poster. Yeah, it, it's the pretty chosen one. It's dope. pretty it's pretty dope. Um, and I mean, look at the little smirk. Like I know yeah. that I'm gonna be who I'm I'm about to be. The only thing that would set that off is if you got the Carmelo and Dwayne Wade like right above yeah. it from that year. It is it is also humbling knowing he's younger in that photo than I am <laughs> right now. Like, I like that's that. tough. Just a little added inspiration every day. I like yeah, that. it's like yeah. I could have been doing that, but here I am on my couch and sure. just talking shit. Yeah, um, I love that. And the, right. and the merch inventory over here too. Oh right? yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, we got a lot. So. Th- little inside a uh, good time here with that merch we ordered a lot of those oh that's probably a year and a half old the order got messed up so we got a bunch of extra like triple quadruple xls oh, nice. so that whole bottom shelf is just triple xls that i can't get rid of okay so if anyone listening right now is wants a giant hoodie go for it dm us we'll send you it because i have a bunch of triple xls i've been trying to get rid of forever <laughs> dude they've just been sitting there i don't know what to do with them like i might just turn them into like a blanket or something i don't know yeah i mean yeah blanket you can rock them out when you're camping i mean yeah. indianapolis you probably wouldn't want to camp right now because it's like 15 degrees brutal but. maybe some pillowcases yeah. out of the couch yeah. all right what if i just sew them into this futon <laughs> and it's just all tie-dye disgusting you got you have a uh, good times tie-dye quilt yeah. I mean, you can oh, yeah. Hey. Exactly. Um, I'm glad that we're already off the rails, by the oh, way. Oh, well, that's that's this entire episode. Every single episode is off the rails. Um, but let's get on it. Cracked Rackets. Talk to me about the first conversation or the first thought that popped in your head is like, I want to do this thing. What's the idea? Who are you having that conversation with? And how early on was that? Yeah. So um, I think, um, you know, for your audience, I know you already know uh, my mm-hmm. family. I'm the oldest of four boys, have three younger brothers. So grew up playing every sport in the book. Um, but in probably 2016, 2017, uh, you know, was out of college at this point, was in law school, uh, playing in an old man's USTA tennis league with the Hell current yeah. team that I still play with. And um, actually, Alex Leopold and I, who no longer lives in Indianapolis, was, um, you know, we were following the contingent of Tommy Paul, uh, Francis Tiafo, Taylor Fritz. Uh, Riley Opelka, Noah Rubin was in the mix as well. And um, they were crushing it, man. They were winning, uh, or not only competing for junior slams, they were winning them. Yeah. And, you know, as a big sports guy, you look around the room, speaking of LeBron, you know, you found coverage of him at every level since he Mm -hmm. was seventh, eighth grade. And then you're seeing him on ESPN, um, you know, almost weekly or monthly when he was in high school, right? Um, So I was just, I was a little peeved by that and um so in 2017 we finally kind of pulled the trigger on a written blog uh cracked rackets we almost went with tennis tribune which would have been an absolute casualty yeah it would have been tough we dodged that bullet thankfully um and uh actually found out pretty quickly that you know even in 2017 so five six years ago people had the attention spans of squirrels yep so, you know, we need... They've already stopped listening to this podcast. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah no one's even right. made it. So, it's just so us you, now. you ask one question, I talked <laughs> yeah. for 45 minutes, and They're we out. haven't even covered See what we ya. needed to cover. Uh, but, uh, so yeah, so people have the attention spans of squirrels. We needed to get into audio and video pretty quickly there. Uh, Daniel Westoff, uh, who is still 
uh, my business partner today is my best friend from high school. Um, and then I followed him to St. Louis University. Uh, he was an aerospace engineer by trade. Went in, went into that trade, and it was as brutal as it sounds. Yeah. Um, so he ended up, you know, going full time on this. So he was already in the mix at seventeen from the ground floor. Uh, we were working with Alex Leopold, as I mentioned before, uh, Parker Thieneman, my little brother, a couple of his buddies, Rob Thomas uh, from Louisville, and then also Alex Ariza, who's one of my best friends from uh, SLU from undergrad. But Alex Gruskin, who is the core uh, cornerstone of this story for Cracked Rackets dms us several months later so it's like october november and says hey um i'm already recording a podcast from my dorm room in michigan and we're covering you know who are the top five guys would score best on the act who who would be best at the nfl combine or in a 40 time so i'm like oh man this is exactly what we're looking for um so i'll stop there because i could i could go for days so it starts as a blog you realize all right shit we got to get in the video audio. What? So you mentioned that you've noticed this gap in coverage of these young stars who like internationally are doing very well and being like, what do you think the issue was? Why weren't they getting that attention? Was it just like a, like a reach standpoint? They couldn't kind of get to them. What was the, why, why was there that gap? No, I, I don't think it was reach. Um, I don't think it was accessibility um, because we still have this problem today. The yeah. tennis powers at B man, just, uh, for whatever reason, the tennis media does not operate like, uh, you know, the media and the big three. And I don't know if that's a resource or, or funding issue or um, they're so focused on the top 10 in the sport, predominantly on the men's side, if I was being honest, um, you know, maybe the top three to five on the women's that um, there's no other coverage for even top 50 in the world, let alone top 250 to 500. You get to college tennis, which as you being a you know former college tennis player oh, yourself yeah. can attest, the level is unbelievable. The dual match atmosphere is uh, the best kept secret in sports, and I will mm-hmm. die on that hill. Uh, but then you get down to junior tennis. So um, they're just, yeah, it's crazy, man. The media landscape in tennis is um, just not there, and I knew it was right for disruption. And um, tennis in general still needs more coverage, so that's yeah. still our mission today. It's, it's cool because with tennis – more than almost any other sport, there's so much personality involved. I mean, you're out there by yourself, and people treat it as, like, a country club sport, but, like, there's so much per- – like, it's you. You're not, you're not even part of a team at this point at a college level, obviously, but, like, there's a lot of personality that just isn't tapped into, and when you grow up in the junior ranks, you see that. Like, you, certain players have certain, like, tendencies, have behave certain ways – but you only see that from personal experience. It's not covered enough where I feel like, is that part of the goal of like, let these personalities shine? Like they're already doing it. Just let people see it now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, that's, I couldn't have said it any better. That's exactly what we're trying to do because, and you know, I think uh break point on Netflix, I'd be remiss if mm-hmm. I, I didn't bring that up. I think it's going to be um, hopefully as good as uh, for tennis as it was for F1. And um, that's exactly how, you know, we're trying to be at Cracked Rackets. And I think uh, tennis in general needs to get with the times from a, um, you know, a storytelling standpoint, a, um, you know, building up these characters, like you mentioned, man, there's yeah. so many, it's not just Curios is fantastic for yeah. the sport, uh, but they, every single player out there has a story and a background of where they came to get to where they are. Um, and it, they need to be told. So if we can provide a platform um, you know, with people on our team that are as passionate about tennis as, as I am and Alex Gruskin is, um, I, you know, I think that the tennis community is going to be better for it. And was there a moment early on that kind of sticks with you and it was like, a, oh shit, this could work? Because when you start something like this, it's always in the back of your mind, like you never really think, oh, this might not work. But in the back of your mind, that thought's still there. Was there a moment where you're like, Oh, we got something going here. Like this was like the aha moment. Okay, we got it. Sure. So uh, that's a great question. I, uh, you know, at the time when I started CR and our team started CR, I was in law school, um, you know, in the political sphere doing lobbying work at the state house, and I still am today. Um, but I think the um, the aha moment, which it wasn't an aha moment, like oh, you know, shit, we made it. Like mm-hmm. this, there's a market here, and this is going to take off, and things are going to be crazy. Um, but 2018 national indoors in Chicago, 
Um, you know, Gruskin and Westoff are up there covering the event kind of informally, not paid. And we just go up there because it's close to home for, you know, at this point, Westoff is in, uh, he's still in St. Louis, but it's a close drive. So three and a half, four hours, whatever that looks like. Same for Gruskin coming from um, Ann Arbor area, Michigan. So they, they go to indoors and there literally is no, uh, n- there are no other media there. No media, really? no sponsors. Uh, the best players in the country, J.J. Wolf at the time was at Ohio mm-hmm. State, um, is shocked when Gruskin is asking for a, um, an interview. And, you know, going into the event, I think we were a little shell-shocked that we were doing this to begin with. Like, yeah. we have no formal media background, no formal media training. We didn't, none of us went to school for this. Um, so, you know, there's still that kind of self-doubt, like, you know, are we, why are we doing this like yeah. someone else from Syracuse or wherever the fuck should be doing this and um so going there um it there was kind of a you know a, you come up to the road and there's you could go left or right right and um you know my dad is a is a developer small business owner so is my mom in the real estate industry so uh, you know they they have been uh you know great mentors to me so at that point I'm talking to them and like hey uh, we're the only media covering this event. And my dad basically said, you know, that's for one of two reasons. The first is, um, there's no money here. There's no eyeballs. There's no marketability. Um, or the second is you've struck gold. Um, so, uh, you know, me being me and Gruskin and Westoff being them. And, uh, we kind of have a mentality at CR that's do more, uh, train, train, train. And it may sound corny, uh, but just keep pushing and, and keep chugging along. And that's what we, we did from there. But that was kind of the moment to answer your question where it was like, okay, either there's something here and we're going to corner this market and have a monopoly over college tennis, mm-hmm. basically. Um, or uh, we're going to go uh, under in <laughs> yeah, a couple quick, months yeah. before we even started making money, yeah. right? <laughs> either way, it's a breaking point. Like, all right, we're, we're on to something or we'll be done real quick. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, did you... Early on, those early days, were there people, whether in the media or actual players themselves, who would kind of just like, what the fuck are these guys doing? Like, oh. why are they here? Still, still And, to and, and then, like, how do you handle that? Like, hey, we're trying to help you. Like, we're trying to be here, like, put you guys on. Do you run into that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I would say, um, you know, most of the guys and girls that we're covering are close to our age. Mm-hmm. So I think they're like, hell yeah, like, yeah, let's do this. Yeah. And we have a lot more in common. Um, I think it's uh, it goes without saying that right when they start interacting with us, the passion kind of is obvious. Yeah. So it's not like, oh, you know, fuck these guys. Who are these young dudes that have a microphone and whatever? Uh, but it's more the older generation who um, either is in the media landscape. They, um, you know, are execs at whatever organization. And they're just like, you know. Who are these? They're, these guys are a pain in the ass. They're on Twitter, uh, you know, tweeting out, um, you know, their frustrations or their feedback or recommendations. And um, we were kind of like a gnat on the shoulder in the summertime, mm-hmm. man. We were like, oh, uh, annoying. But I think, um, you know, over the years, it's pretty apparent that we're not going anywhere. Like we're, yeah. we're locked in here. Uh, but yeah, to, to answer your question uh, about players when we approached them with interviews, I was, um, you know, talking to Bradley Kwan, who, uh, you know, played at Stanford, uh, former top, you know, 100 uh, in the world player who is still playing today. And I remember him, uh, you know, Dennis Kudla, Michael Moe, Chris Eubanks, Will Blumberg in 2017, 2018. And we approached these guys for interviews, either audio, like just, yeah. you know, DM or whatever, when we had 100 followers uh, or, uh, we got press passes and possibly at Western Southern and Cincy, which I'm yeah. sure you still oh, go yeah. to every year. That's a ball oh, ice yeah. event. Um, but they like those guys uh, were incredible. Like they were just like, yeah, we'll, we'll give you 30 minutes. We'll yeah. give you 45 minutes. And I think that was another kind of aha moment where it was like, man, if, you know, guys of this caliber are willing to sit down with us and mm-hmm. are enjoying this coverage because they after the interviews, they were laughing and cutting up and they, you know, yeah. reposted our stuff. I knew it was like, you know, it's game time here. We've got something. Yeah, that's always cool when, especially like the early days, I noticed that is 
I, like you get a lot of no's, or at least I got a lot of no's. You're shooting a lot of DMs, a lot of messages like, hey, you want to come on this podcast? Want to come on? I get 95% no's or no responses. They're not sure. like out, outwardly saying no, but not getting a response. But when someone does kind of throw you a bone and be like, listen, like I'm not a position now where you coming on this podcast isn't going to help you that much. It's like two years ago. I'm like, it's not going to help you that much. It's going to help me way more than it's going to help you. So you taking the time coming on here means the world. And then you kind of keep that connection. Once they do come on, yeah. I'm always under the impression once you get to the door, like, you're going to enjoy yourself here. Yeah. Like you're going to have a fun time. Like you're going to have a good time, no pun intended. And like, you're just going to enjoy yourself. So it's just the getting them through the door is the hard part. Yeah. Well, so tell me, cause, um, I'm like the shameless plug guy. Oh at yeah. CR. Uh, you need at least one in every startup juncture like yeah. this. Um, like, and it's, I, it's not any different than a sales rep, right? Where you knock on a hundred doors and, you know, the first 99 slam it into your face. But that one, that last one, uh-huh. if you're willing to go and, and make it happen, that could be a game changer. So are you shameless? In so the, the DM I'm way? working on it. I, well, I, the DMs and like reaching out to guests, I'm much better at. But when it comes to a self-promotion, that's where I've like, I've put up a wall and I've slowly like chiseled away at that wall because it's really hard to change like your social media presence at least with what i'm doing is like my instagram and twitter growing up growing up with that everyone who follow that is like my close personal friends sure they already know i'm doing good time they know i'm doing this stuff so it always felt like overkill when i'm promoting the same podcast episode four times on my instagram story <laughs> and I was, I was like ah, i feel like i'm bothering them i once and then i got to a point where i, I looked at the analytics and stuff i'm like wait a second 99% of the people following me right now aren't my friends, aren't my family, people I know in public or like know in person. I'm like, wait a second. I'm not, this isn't for them now. This was like curated when I'm in like high school, middle school, sure. my Instagram was curated for them. Now I'm like, wait a second, this isn't for them anymore. And then it kind of flipped a switch where I got better. I'm like, okay, like I think this is good content. I want more people to see it. There's no reason people aren't going to just stumble upon it as often. I have to put it out there and I've gotten better at that, but that's a hard bridge to cross over if you're in this like game where it's like <laughs> I, it feels like overkill because i'm like i don't want to see this four different times but maybe someone will see the fourth time and they'll be like i like this podcast and then i'll listen for the next couple of years and they're locked in for life yeah exactly you just got to keep that door open if you keep closing it open it you just keep it open keep plugging away but that's definitely a hurdle i had to get over i was like ah, yeah. i don't and i think that held me back honestly the first like probably six months to a year of doing good time doing this podcast. I was like, I, I don't want to be annoying to my peers, which I'm like, who gives a shit? Cause yeah. then people actually reach out to me who maybe I haven't talked to in like a year. They're like, Hey, this is really cool. Saw this on your story. I'm like, okay, I'm getting there. But that was definitely a big hurdle to get over. Yeah, man. It's uh, and to your point, like it's especially you having grown up in the social media world where you've had these, uh, and curate is a fantastic word, by the way. We'll have to talk about yeah. how you kind of, you know. Uh, Sometimes, so most of the time I make up words. So when I drop a good vocab word, it's sick. <laughs> so I'm going to clip, clip that. Clip that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, super producer, clip that. Yeah, thing. yeah, everyone oh, back wait, there. He's right yeah, here. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, at some point, um, you know, it would be a pretty good uh, shtick if you, like, wore, like, ten hats. Oh yeah. While you were and because you wear all the hats, yeah, or just most of the hats have a different like editor, producer, yeah, yeah, yeah. host, yeah, and just had them actually lab- label. And then like you know during the clip portion, oh yeah, super producer back there, and you throw it off or something. I thought about doing a podcast with myself one time. So how I was gonna do it? I didn't have a guest for that week, and I'm like trying to do pretty good, make sure consistency's key. And I had a guest cancel last minute, so I was like, what if I interviewed myself? Did yeah. like a state of the union of where good times at, and I filmed it separately on different sides of the couch and just clipped it together but i was like the time timing that up would take way longer than it's worth sure so i was like i almost thought about that i thought it'd be really funny to do an episode so it might still happen eventually if i get more time on my hands because i think that'd be a a hilarious moment just interviewing myself yeah man that would be well so either when you get more time on your hands or um you know sooner rather than later when you have a full-time producer to do this yeah that would be hilarious um now (laughs) As a tennis guy, how much do you hate pickleball? 
So, Where do you guys stand on that? Oh my! So I love that you asked that because I we've been kind of going back and forth and and messing with our uh, traditional tenant because we still do have those tennis traditionalists that follow us who the first couple of years were like you know cracked rackets like what d- disrupting yeah. tennis like what a, who it's are a gentleman's guys? sport why are we cracking yeah, sport rackets out yeah here? my you know my buttons all the way buttoned to yeah. the top and I'm going to the country club and, <laughs> but no but uh, you know we still have that kind of segment of the tennis audience who follow us and, and thank you for your support and the hate. I love it both. Um, but yeah, for pickleball, I initially was a naysayer, man. I can't not, uh, dance around that. Um, and I, I was definitely like, Oh, you know, this is the only reason that this is blowing up is because, uh, you know, the people that are loving it don't have the tennis background and Mm -hmm. haven't put in the work to get the muscle memory and the technique, which is still all true. But now I've been playing with some clients and buddies in my network who either don't play tennis or golf, which are my kind of two things. Um, And it's now I'm like, kind of, I kind of like it. Can I, can I say that? We cut that. We can cut that. (laughs) I've gone back and forth. I, I just hated it initially because my dad, because my dad loved it. Yeah. Like as a kid, like that's, (laughs) that's just a natural reaction. Yeah. If your parent loves something, you're just inclined to hate it. Yeah. yeah, Like, I don't like this, but I've played a few times. I kind of enjoy this. It's kind of easier for me to like, just casually go out and play. Like, I feel like court time's a little easier actually now that they're blowing up. It's like, you can get two courts on one tennis court. It's yeah. like, oh, maybe maybe there's something here. Yep. But it's interesting because, like, I think probably initially you were like, this is almost a competitor. Like, pickleball growing up, did you view it that way at all? So I, I never uh, looked at it that way. I actually think um, and have, like, since it started blowing up the last 18 to 24 months that uh, this is going to get more people in the tennis store. Like, okay. Just – you know, I don't think it's going to be a huge segment of the pop, the pickleball population that comes in and, and experiments with tennis. But I do think some of the top players who are a little more athletic, who are crushing it at pickleball, are, you know, not at the national level where they're top, you know, 25 or whatever mm-hmm. ranked. But the people who are dominating in their, you know, communities or leagues or with their buddies are going to be like, shit, I'm bored now. I need, I, let's go try out tennis yeah. or padel or whatever it looks like. And um, so I think it's going to be really good for tennis. Um, the only, my only annoyance, which is still, um, you know, kind of, and I, I can feel it kind of coming to the yeah. top. It's it's boiling up a little bit. Is there's no infrastructure still in pickleball? Like Indianapolis is, you know, it's a small big city, but it's still a big city, top twelve in the country. We don't have one pickleball facility that's like a pickleball facility. Yeah. Um, yet indoor or out. It's crazy. So it's, um, you know, there are high schools who have put pickleball courts in. There are some, you know, whatever that have popped up. Mm-hmm. Carmel Racquet Club, IRC, yep. the, you know, Pearson, uh, et cetera, et cetera, have put in pickleball so that they can get more revenue in the door. But we just, we need some more infrastructure facilities and programming. So shout out to Poppy and, and yeah. Vamos Pickle. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's interesting because it's almost like history repeating itself. It's like, the same thing happened with tennis where like it's there wasn't as much exposure. I feel like pickleball is correcting that a little bit where like they're doing a, a pretty good job early on to like get the name out there. They have big names behind it now. You got – and I think it's a little more accessible for just an average person to go out there and play pickleball. Sure. So then once these people get in the door of pickleball, they're like, oh, I kind of enjoy this. I understand tennis better now that I've played pickleball. Yeah. Someone who's never played tennis in their life always shut that door. It's just like that first step into the door. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I like I to- that. I totally agree. Um, and, you know, it's, I still, the noise, yeah, I, I know a lot of people oh, complain the noise. about that. Like, the, it's, I feel like I'm the Grinch, like the noise, noise, <sighs> noise, you know, the, the who's down in Whoville. <laughs> it's the, the grumpy old neighbors, get off my lawn. That's why there's pickleball courts even more going on across the street. Yeah. And I was like, I don't, the people who live like a couple feet away from that, brutal yeah brutal and yeah, I, yeah, I still yeah. enjoy the sport but i'm like that's tough yeah that would piss me off for sure for um sure. all right so we talked a little bit before the show but you're based in indy we're both here in indy what limitations does that have because there's not there used to be uh a tournament here right 
I'm young. Yeah, there was a yeah, term yeah. Here. You are young. What limitations does it have being an indie compared to a bit, maybe a bigger market? And sure. are there plans to kind of move into those bigger markets? Yeah, man. It's I, I've gotten this question a lot the last like couple months, especially with things Same. kind of blowing. <laughs> That's where yeah. I'm at. Yeah. yeah, which is great. You know, mm-hmm. um, I I'm glad that we're in that position that we're answering exactly. the question. Right, good problem to have, but. Um, yeah, my wife, Hannah and I will be in Indianapolis, uh, you know, hopefully forever. And then, you know, maybe have another place somewhere else down the road. But, um, so I think, you know, we'll at least have some kind of presence in Indianapolis, uh, hopefully forever. But, um, you know, that being said, it's not lost on me that, um, you know, tennis, um, you know, we need to be in a, a bigger market. Um, we already have a really good relationship with tennis channel. We've kind of got a revenue share agreement with their tennis channel podcast network and have for the last four or five years. Um, and, uh, you know, Gruskin, I think we talked about this in 17. Um, I think at that point it was pretty crazy talk at that point yeah. because we didn't, uh, you know, we had no clue what this was going to become, but you know, he's always wanted to, uh, call slams and, oh, yeah. um, that's the ultimate goal for him. He wants to be, you know, a, a play-by-play commentator at the highest level of the sport. And, um, you know, for Gruskin, tennis is life, man. Like a lot of people think that he's like putting on this facade and whatever. It is literally he eats, sleeps, and breathes it. It's corny to say that, but he legitimately he's does. the man, dude. Dude, he's when I man. when I was, you know, 25, 26, 27. I was doing anything but staying in on Friday nights and watching tennis. Um, I can tell you that. Yeah. And I, I'm a self-proclaimed big tennis guy. Yeah. Um, but he does that and he he's eat up with it. Absolutely eat up with it. So he, uh, you know, I think at this point he's getting the credibility that he deserves. Uh, I was hoping that, you know, some of the opportunities he's gotten the last year or two uh, would happen earlier because mm-hmm. I knew that he was a unicorn from a talent perspective and yeah. his memory recall um, but he will, he will call slam finals. Uh, I'm calling the shot right now. Uh, not just slam slam finals Love one it. day. Um, and part of that plan, um, was never, uh, it would be crazy for, you know, Westoff and I and cracked rackets and, and Gruskin is a part of, you know, he's a business owner, uh, as well. So he, uh, we're all in this together, but he, um, you know, it would be crazy for us to hold him back. We don't want to limit him in any way. Oh, for sure. Uh, so, uh, you know, with Tennis Channel and that relationship growing, he's going to have more and more opportunities out there. So I, uh, you know, I don't know if you have a little, you know, magic eight ball in here, but I'm, you know, if you did, I would think if we we shook it up a little bit, it would say that he will move to Los Angeles uh, by the end of the year. Wow. I like that. Yeah. Sweet. Oh. A few miscellaneous questions i have for you just kind of wrap up here um the will smith slap he won an oscar for the king richard this is very off what we're talking about but (laughs) he won an oscar for the king richard movie great tennis movie there's not a lot of great tennis movies the will smith slap overtook that from a media standpoint is the will smith slap bad for tennis (laughs) i uh I, if it I, could be if I if I were writing down um, ten thousand questions that you were gonna ask me before this, yeah. which I you know I didn't, but um, that would not even make a list of ten thousand. That is hilarious. something I thought about because I was <laughs> there's no good tennis movies, and King Richard was a good tennis movie, and oh, it, I got a lot of pub because Will Smith was gonna win Oscar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he did win the Oscar. Sure. If he didn't slap Chris Rock, we'd be talking about King Richard a lot more. Yeah. Tennis might get a little more pub. Dude, I, Something I, to think I, about. I think you're all over it, uh, and I like the way you think because that's fucking hilarious. But th- it is 100% bad for tennis, and I th- that movie rocks, dude. Rocks. Like, that rocks. Is, that is I a, love that movie. You know, I Am Legend is a good movie, but, you know, King Richard is legendary, man. Yeah. That is absolutely legendary. I, I truly feel bad for the Williams family because, um, you know, I know Venus and Serena and – um, their mom and the whole family was super, super intimately involved in that. Like it wasn't just, and also, I don't know if you know this, um, whenever they were initially trying to get the movie bought, um, Will Smith could not get any major studio to like buy the rights and, and do it. So he funded the movie himself. 
So everyone hates you know, tennis, bro. Yeah, everyone dude, everyone I know, hates tennis. I know it's not for a lack of trying, man. <laughs> but it's just yeah, dude. Tennis, man. It's it's. Uh, but it definitely is bad for tennis, and I think it's also bad for. Well, it's good for Chris Rock because I mean, yeah. you know, he's he's got this stand up tour. Oh yeah, on, sold out for sure. <laughs> um, I kind of want to go. I think he's coming I, to Indy. Later. I think he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll um, see you there. We'll go. Yeah, yeah. But you we'll, buy my we'll ticket. That, you buy three, my ticket. Those we'll, tickets probably crazy. We'll rock the three XL sweaters. There, there, we, go. there yeah. we go. Just walking around in these <laughs> like one of those snuggies, those giant things. That's basically what they are at this point. Um, <laughs> so speaking of movies, uh, sure. we have a Battle Flicks trivia show here okay. uh, where it's just movie trivia. The yep. tournament's coming up in March. Stay tuned. Thank you, Job House, for sponsoring that. Love that. Um, what's a movie that you be your go-to, like ask me any question about this movie, and I could answer it? Do oh, you have e- one? Easy. Coach Carter. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay, I have a similar one. Mine's Glory Road. You oh, ever watch that movie? I love Glory Road. Oh, yeah, what a great. Movie. Well, also, Kentucky is, I'm a big UK okay. fan. Unf- I know I'm up in Indianapolis and yeah, Notre guys- Dame, Purdue, IU territory, but... Yeah, UK. I was gonna say Kentucky kind of gets dogged in that movie. They do, they do. But I still and make them look bad too. They're like, oh, this is a bunch of racists over there. That's <laughs> yeah. pretty much the movie it, is. It's it like, is. oh, we got UTS, we got Texas El Paso, and yeah. then a bunch of racists from Kentucky. It's, it's true. That's Glory yeah. Road. <laughs> so yeah, all that aside, I I still like the flip. I mean, I'm a big basketball guy. Yeah. So. Um, you're rooting for Kentucky the whole time. Watch that movie. You're like, I, was, I, was I hope we pull it out this time. End. Yeah, I was devastated at the end. Well, what? We don't win? Yeah. We win everything. Yeah, I watched it once and I won't watch it again, but I still, you know, I love it. I love it. Yeah. You're just ask, like hoping for a different <laughs> ending. You've seen the movie a billion times. Yeah. Uh, Coach Rupp's going to pull this one out. I believe in my boys. Oh, man. Pat Riley at point guard. Oh, no way man. we lose. Dude, and then, you know, Riley, even outside of all the stuff that he's done for the NBA and, and New York and the Lakers and Miami, oh, like yeah. now he's on HBO with the whole Magic of series. He is. And, oh, that guy. Um, all right, so. Also, well, just if I had like a 1A, 1B, remember the Titans is also. Oh, okay. Just, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a classic. Yeah. So if anyone, uh, any of our competitors are listening, if you get a, a phone a friend option, Coach Carter question, remember Titans question, you know who to call. Um, uh, can I run some ideas by you for Cracked Rackets? 100%. I'm a big ideas guy. It's what I do in this podcast. Just throw out ideas. Yep. I don't put any funding behind it. I just throw them out into the arena for people to grab if they want. <laughs> uh, so You're such a do-gooder. Yeah, I, I just, I'm a giver. It's what I do. I give it back to the people. <laughs> if you guys want to run with these ideas, I don't even want credit. Say, claim it as your own. Uh, first one, Cracked Rackets only fans. Hear me out. Audio only tennis match. You know how that sounds. Yeah, that would that would be that fits the OnlyFans uh, model. Some people might be into that. All the grunting, the moaning. They just sure. put on a podcast. It's just a tennis match, so you're filming a tennis match anyways. You can cover it however you want, but just the audio of the grunting and moaning back and forth could put it behind a paywall. Some extra cash. Yeah, man. Um, so believe it or not, I hate to like you know uh, completely throw you off. Yeah. Um, we have joked for years about CR after dark. Oh. We haven't really gone into like what that means, but we're like, oh, this is a CR after dark moment. Oh, I, so I feel like that's like right in the wheelhouse. Perfect. So like if we want to kind of put together more of a content roadmap, I'm in. All right. Uh, just, just an idea. <laughs> um, just an idea. P- ping pong in general. I think it's been overlooked for years, for oh. decades. It's a great sport and pickleball is past it and it pisses me off. I love ping pong. What are your thoughts on ping pong? Well, so uh, – this I know you did incredible research and and actually lined up a lot of good questions here. <laughs> um, you your researcher back there, if he, wherever yeah, he is, he's back there. He's, uh, he's, he's the somewhere. Closet. He he fucked up in one regard. You're talking to the Indiana King of ping pong. Shut the f- dude. Don't. I will Stop. shut you down, dude. Stop. I have a two handed backhand. Nope. Done. It's it's over. You've lost all credibility. You can't use a tui. Oh man, it's dude. The tui is Louie, like bluey Stop. and gooey, baby. Stop. Dude, I just, it's it's nasty, dude. Stop. I can. I've got crazy angles too. I'll shred you in ping pong. I, I regret regret asking that question. Oh yeah, all the good time fans, just wait. We're gonna do a ping pong video at some point, man. That's gonna be oh hundred percent. Yeah. Um. Oh, another <laughs> idea. I don't even know what this one means. I wrote this down yesterday. Hand. Let me try to work this out. What does this mean? I wrote down hand tennis. What does that even mean? Let's think. Playing with your hands. Um, no, I don't know. Scratch that idea. I have no idea what that means. I literally – so I wrote something down, scratched it out, and then wrote hand tennis. Huh. I don't understand my brain sometimes. Yeah. Um, oh, here's an idea I like. So you know how people play like chess online through like – and they play people online. Uh, they make a move, and the other person can make their move whenever. Sure. Like, and, or like words with friends, stuff like that, yeah. where you make a move, they make a move tennis app like that you log in forehand 
send it to the other person. And then you're playing an opponent, and they're like, backhand. Boom. And then you are in a slice, and you have to pay extra money. You're like, oh, I want to hit a drop shot? That'll be 99 cents. Boom. And so you play a full match with some kid across the country. Yeah. Just one shot at a time. You can only shoot one shot a day. <laughs> and it's just clicking a button, forehand, backhand. And, and then you like click it, and be like, you missed. You're like, fuck. How did I miss? And then you had to pay more money to like get a better forehand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's basically like the like, uh, well, I don't know, Angry Birds or yeah. like any of those, whatever. Like, oh yeah, kind of yeah. But um, for tennis, just like playing each other. No man, dude, interconnectivity. I, I, that's that's another lane, man. It's not just the coverage <laughs> and media side that's uh, missing out, man. The the video game side of tennis is the worst, man. I feel like oh, t- so like, bad. We tennis perfected it. Yeah, yeah that yeah. was it. That's yeah. all we have with we tennis. That was the peak, and then there's been nothing since. And that was like what 15 years ago, a yeah. decade ago. Yeah, and it's the worst graphics of all time, but somehow it's the most fun tennis game there is. Yeah, that well, so then that, and then N64 Mario Tennis is still pretty incredible. But I don't like, think I ever played that. What? Mario? You, you probably don't even know what the N64 is. Okay, you? I'm not that young. <laughs> I had an N64. Um, my brothers had an N64. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, I don't think I played Mario Tennis. I oh, might have man. to check that out. Add that to the list. Man. I will. Scribble that's that idea. in a little bit. Maybe that's course. what I meant by hand. Dude, what did I mean by hand tennis? That's pissing me off now. I want to know what that idea I'm going to call you later this week by, hey, I got it. I know what the idea is. Well, it sounds like it, you know, pickleball's blowing up, a like paddle. Like it's maybe it's handball, like a new yeah. like hand tennis kind of. Yeah, but I give my brain <laughs> enough credit to think tennis. of something better. What does that mean, dude? I mean, it would be, you know, tennis would be a little more accessible because it wouldn't, you know, wouldn't cost yeah. a dime other than a can of tennis balls to play hand tennis yeah that's dumb i don't trust my brain anymore um <laughs> all right last uh two questions for you okay now, one you asked me this actually before five years from now where are you guys at yeah paint the uh, picture so that's that's a great question um and you know this stays completely in house like of don't course. share this yeah with no, anybody. One will, no one will so, see this so this is offline um, you think they could listen this far? Our yeah. attention spans? No way. That's true. That's true. I mean, dude, it's I. what, 30 minutes in, yeah. 40 minutes in. Um, no, you know, I think we are, um, as I mentioned before, before we hopped on, uh, the broadcast side of the business is what, well, so the podcast side of the business and, you know, the blog and all of that is what made us a business initially. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we were doing cool things. We, um, you know, uh, thankfully had the support and the eyeballs from our audience, but the broadcast side of the business is what has taken us into another stratosphere. Um, so, you know, if we can keep covering more and more uh, college tennis, uh, challengers, uh, I want to get into the 250s, 500s, thousands, and even an alternative broadcast setup uh, to Grand Slam, similar to Pat yeah. McAfee's doing yeah. in Indianapolis here, the Manning cast, whatever you want that to look like. Um, so that's, I mean, that's what I envision. Um, hopefully at that point we have, uh, regional representation, not only in North America, but globally, um, you know, every tennis federation will have a CR representative at the very least. Oh yeah. So think, um, you know, the athletic, uh, but on tennis. So there's like a, a writer for each kind of setup. Awesome. So, um, and broadcaster and podcaster and the whole nine yards. So that's, that's one lane. Um, the other, which a lot of people don't know about, which is the offline stuff, shh, don't tell anyone, yeah. is, um, and I think we've texted about this a little bit. So we've got a um, an umbrella brand that's uh, formally launching this summer that's uh, not as edgy as Barstool, um, isn't as kind of, you know, I love Bill Simmons and the Ringer, but it's mm-hmm. going to be a little more edgy than that. So yeah. somewhere in between. Uh, but we'll have a Cracked Rackets in hopefully every sport. We'll do some pop culture and some reality Hell TV. Yeah. We'll do pickleball. We'll do uh, ping pong. We'll do NBA, NFL, college football, so, you know, soccer, yeah. lacrosse, you name it. Um, probably not baseball because I'm not a big baseball guy. But, um, you know. My cubbies. My cubbies. I've given up on. <laughs> Wrigleyville's fun. Oh, dude. Wrigley's the greatest place. It's my happy place. Yeah. Greatest place on earth. But, but you know, I – and then hopefully, you know, at that point, Good Times and uh, the brand, which I can't name at this point because lawyers suck, yeah. um, are, are working a little closer oh, together yeah. and we can do more what is the best fast food food out there and Cheesy Gordita Crunch is going to be number one on that list every time. It's up there. It's up there. I mean, it's tough. That's tough. Yeah. It, it needs to, it needs the 199 mark. Right now it's like two thirty something. Sure. If you can get it to one ninety nine, I think it's the best value in the world. That's it's fair. The greatest, but it's yeah, a yeah. little too pricey. I always tell people I'm a Taco Bell guy. 
people come to me for a Taco Bell order, I go, listen, if you're willing to spend an extra dime, cheesy gordita. If not, beefy five layer, great alternative, a yep. little cheaper. Sure. Get a cravings box, go for there. But cheesy gordita, it's up there, man. It's tough. Um, Chicken yeah. quesadilla is not bad either. Yeah, that's, that, that's another two ninety nine. I mean, you're richer than I am because that's like. <laughs> well, because I'm older, I hope. I yeah, hope so. I hopefully I can afford some cheesy gorditas <laughs> and some chicken quesadillas in a couple of years. We'll yeah, see though. In a decade, I'm a decade old. Yeah, so like the video, so I can afford some cheesy gorditas. <laughs> like, um, subscribe, follow. Yeah, all that stuff. I always hate doing that, dude. Every single. You have to though. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the podcast. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit that <laughs> notification bell. I want to. Every time I say that, so I'm not gonna do that, but like do those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you have to sell your soul a little. Bit. Yeah, that's where the shameless plug. Is. I still don't have that in me. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe that's like gonna be my downfall. That's why good times never take off because I just can't do that. Um, uh, last question for you. Question sure. I ask everyone who comes on this podcast. I know this one. Yeah, you know it. What gets you up in the morning, man? Oh man, um, I I am kind of. Um, a lunatic, dude. Like, I just, I love, I'm like the most optimistic person that you'll ever meet. Um, I, I just wake up. I don't need coffee or anything. And no coffee. Uh, my, my college buddies and, and my three little brothers and my parents and Hannah and, and our new dog, George. Shout out, George. Uh, yeah, George is, is a legend. Um, they all know, uh, my closest friends know that I just, I wake up and I'm ready, dude. I, I love life. Uh, life is so short. Um, so it's, it's really not, I don't need a carrot at the end of the, of the track. Uh, you know, if I'm on the treadmill or the, or the track at the local high school, um, I just, yeah, man, I, I, uh, it's hard, right? Because a lot of people are like, I'm going after the the big promotion or, you know, I want to win this, you know, tennis tournament, or I want this or this, uh, for me, man, it, it, um, things have, have, I've been really lucky in my life. And not to get too serious on you because we've already gone long enough. But, um, you know, you got to enjoy the journey, man. Because mm-hmm. if you're so locked into the destination, again, I'm throwing out like corny isms. But facts, uh, if you can just appreciate and enjoy the journey of what you're doing, man, there's nothing else. Oh. That is that is pure happiness and pure joy. And thankfully, I, you know, I think I, I've leaned into that. Oh, 100%. I love it. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Dalton. I appreciate it. We'll let people know where they should check out Cracked Rackets. Yeah, well, um, you know, the next time that you're looking for some some cool tennis content, you should, um, you know, well, actually, you'll see me or Gruskin or Westoff in a three x good time. Oh hoodie. yeah, uh, it's gonna be nuts. Get you but, all set up. Yeah, man. Uh, we and we were talking about this before. Website is useless, but you can go to www.crackedrackets.com at cracked rackets, and that's R A C Q U E T S. Wherever you you know social media, we even launched TikTok, Hell so you yeah. know to get more kids your age Hell into yeah. the mix. Um, Welcome to my world. Yeah, no what? kidding, no kidding. Mr. Ferris Bueller it's himself. Brutal, what's dude. what's the guy's name again? On Cameron you? Fry. Cameron Fry. That guy's dude, that, hilarious, it, dude. Oh. dude I, I'm he's become dead to me at this point. I'm so. Have you reached out to him? I've reached out to his his son. Reached out to me, and he was like, "Hey man, why do you look more like my dad than I do?" And I go, dude, I don't know what you want me to do. I, and, <laughs> dude, and then th- that. that gets people more mad than anything. This is – I asked you earlier, like, what was the point you realized you made it? I realized I made it when I got uh, hate comments for looking like this guy. I got a DM. He goes, <laughs> you don't even look like him, dude. Basically told me to unalive myself because I don't look like him. <laughs> oh, I'm like, what? Do you, like, what do you want me to do yeah, in that yeah, situation? Yeah. Like, sure. look like him. I don't know what to do. But welcome to my world. It's not a fun place, man. The TikTok. It's not a fun place, dude. Yeah, and we've and we're doing it regardless. <laughs> you have all, to. The, all these algorithms and on the, the reels and the shorts and TikTok are are 30 seconds, whatever, and it just the organic following is unbelievable. But last thing. Cameron Fry, whoever that guy's actual name is. Alan yeah, Ruck. Alan, yeah, Ruck. Okay, Ruck. So Succession's one Great of my show. favorite show. Great you show. know, shows of all time. I still think it's maybe one or two, even though it's still going. I know we're going way too long. You're fine. Um, but, dude, he his character in that awesome. is holy. So, so I mean, funny. he's still relevant. At least yeah. he's still around, oh, dude. Still it's not it, just dude. Ferris Bueller's. Which if is I can look brand. like that in 40 years, sign me up. I'm yeah, in. 100%. Sweet. Well, hey. Uh, you want to go crack some rackets? Yeah, dude, let's do it. We're going to crack some rackets. Head over to the Instagram if you want to see that. Love y'all. Peace.